So what have we just learned? First of all, the copyright is instant. The moment you save it or otherwise commit it to a tangible medium of expression. Secondly, it doesn't have to be registered with anyone. It doesn't have to have a copyright symbol. There are no copyright cops or authority that sorts out disputes. Copyright protection simply refers to the fact that you can pursue people through the courts if they use your original creative work without your permission. Copyright infringement is almost always a civil rather than a criminal matter. In practice, provided you go through the hoops when you create your work, you hardly ever need to recourse to law. Six, the copyright symbol is nothing more than a flag, marking the fact that you claim copyright and you will pursue anyone who abuses your rights and we learned how to type the copyright symbol on our PC or Mac. But there is still one more hoop we need to jump through. We, we need some way of proving that we created our masterpiece before any scoundrels copied it. We, we need some sort of date stamp. And that's what we're going to explore in this session. Poor man's copyright. Uh, there's long been a belief, and it may work, uh, that all you have to do is to package your manuscript, your music, your script, your software, your photo, illustration, film, whatever, and post it to yourself. If your postal service has a recorded delivery option, all the better. When the parcel is delivered to you, you do not open it, uh, but you file it away for use in any potential future dispute. But what you now have is a sealed package, date stamped by an independent body, your national postal carrier, and inside for any court to see is a copy of your work that clearly existed on that date. Now, I'm not wholly convinced uh, that it would represent irrefutable proof in a court of law. I don't know. Uh, I certainly haven't been able to find a single example of this ploy being used successfully. Lodge it with a worthy person. You could formally hand a copy over to a friend whose word would hold weight in a court of law, you know, an attorney perhaps, or your bank manager, and hope that their word would carry sufficient weight in court. And of course, that, that they'd be willing to testify. Use an online registrar. There are lots of independent commercial organisations you can find online who offer to act as a registrar for a fee. Some masquerade as being official, using words like authority in their company name. Uh, some don't even ask you to send a copy of your work. They, you know, they simply say register and pay. Personally, I can't believe they add that much value, apart from perhaps a, a, a feeling of uh, peace of mind. This is purely my opinion. If you do choose to register with one, uh, I suggest you check what safeguards they do offer. Uh, they'll charge you, by the way, around $50 to $60 uh, for five years worth of registration. Genuine national copyright registrars. In most countries, there is no governmental or quasi-governmental body that registers copyright. But the United States is an interesting exception. They have www.copyright.gov. In the UK, we have something called the Intellectual Property Office, ipo.gov.uk, and they've got a fantastically helpful website, but I'm sorry to say uh, they do not act as a registrar. Published novels. Established publishers usually take care of copyright on behalf of their authors. Uh, that's part of the add-on value that they provide. If, however, you are using a service like Kindle, remember that you are self-publishing. Amazon or Kindle have no interest in helping you to secure your rights. It is up to you. ISBN. What, what, what is ISBN? An ISBN is an international standard book number, a formal, internationally recognised form of identification used by publishers, booksellers, libraries and so on for ordering, listing and stock control. So in essence, it's a stock number. 
it does not convey any form of legal or copyright protection. But, but I do know of some self-publishing novelists who believe it's worth the cost it's, a, it's about $15 for 15 different titles, simply to add another layer of formality onto their work. It, it, it can't do any harm. Help! You know, it, it sounds depressing, doesn't it? But it shouldn't be. Just take a reality check. How much do you really have at risk? If I take myself as an example, I'm a freelance writer. I ghost articles for clients write brochures, company or product scripts, press releases and so on. My work is transitory and if anyone should be worried about copyright it'd be the client, not me. Once written I've lost interest in it and the same is going to be true of most graphic design work or websites created for clients. The only things I need to protect are my business website and these courses. I think that will also be true for the overwhelming majority of people viewing this video. The obvious exception would be software developers creating packaged software solutions. Instead of a transitory piece of work amongst thousands, a software package will represent a major investment in time and money. And in that instance, I would definitely consult an attorney specialising in copyright and in trademark. So for those of us that are really concerned only about things like our website and so on, provided we commit our work to a tangible form and warn people off with a copyright symbol, we'll probably never encounter a copyright breach. But if we do, and it's worth going to court, then at least we'll be well prepared. Case study. It's a bit grandiose calling this a case study. It's really my own experience over the years. In more than 40 years working in marketing, I have never experienced a client suffering from copyright abuse. I have experienced it once myself. A few years ago, I chanced upon my own website, except that it wasn't mine. It was an identical copy, same color scheme, same name, a different domain name, but the same banner headline with my photo in it. Same content, except that the contact me page was blank. I had to do some research to find the owner of the site and who is located both the domain registrar and the domain owner. I forget now how I found her email address, but probably using things like LinkedIn. But once found, I shot off a message you are infringing copyright. Website www, whatever it was, is a blatant breach of my copyright and you will take down that site immediately. I will take action. The site was taken down that day. It wasn't worth the risk. And that's the good news. If the value of our material is not worth the risk, people will simply copy elsewhere once they have been threatened. If our work is worth the risk, then we must be making so much from it that we can afford to go to court. With something called torrent sites, recorded music does have a real problem. And in our next video session, we'll take a peek at what the music and increasingly the literature sectors are doing to protect their work against online piracy.